good day. Welcome again to my lecture video. I hope you are having a good day. In this lecture video, we will talk about communication for various purposes. So since we will be talking about communication for various purposes, so we will start with the basic purposes of communication. So the basic purposes of communication are, of course, very obvious when we are communicating or in the communication that we are involved or in the communication that we are trying to initiate. So of course, as a communicator ourselves, we can easily determine our intention or the intention of the speaker by simply listening to the speech or by reading to the text or by reading the text. So it's either to inform, to instruct, to persuade, to entertain, to motivate, to interact, to regulate, and to express. So these uh, terms are very self-explanatory. When you say to inform, it's either you give the information or you gain the information or you disseminate the information. So by giving the information, by gaining the information, by disseminating the, disseminating the information, that is a form of communication. So in our case that I am having a lecture video, of course, I get or I got this information from my sources. So I am gaining the information and I also disseminate this information to you. So disseminating, giving the information, that's a form of communication. That's why that is the number one purpose of communication, to inform. This is also very common in the companies where you are being informed that today is a special non-working holiday or today you are hereby directed to wear the prescribed uniform like that so that is also part of the to instruct purpose so for the second to instruct for example you are hereby directed to wear white barong and filipiniana for our commencement exercises like that still to instruct or in in the same nature to inform uh, one very clear example also of to instruct that will not confused with to inform purpose is when you are instructing your audience how to do this and how to do that like how to do um, flower bouquet or how to cook a certain um dish like that so how to do a bridal makeup so that's to instruct or to uh, to demonstrate procedures or the steps on how to do a certain process okay for the number three to persuade meaning you have to convince you have to convince the person to do something or to do what you want to be done. Like you have to buy this because this product is very durable and affordable and it is really a must have apparatus in your home because this will lessen your, your effort in cleaning your room for example so like that it's a form of persuasion so by persuading you are communicating so that's one of the purposes of communication and it is very common in advertisements so or even in political campaigns like you have to persuade the audience you have to vote for me this coming election because i will do this and that if ever i will win so that's persuasion next to entertain so this is more on the aesthetics aesthetic 
form of communication like in and storytelling, a monologue, um, uh, what's that, declamation, and other forms of entertainment, uh, spoken poetry, like that. Or talk shows are meant to entertain also people, aside from motivating people or informing people. So, oh, because that's part of the entertainment industry. So its main purpose is really to entertain. Next is to motivate. This is for the inspirational speakers in TED Talks or even in seminars, in recollections, in, in your school programs where there is an inspirational message from the campus director for example so like that so intended to be motivating or intended to inspire people so even even the simple pieces of advice from your parents or from your elders that is intended to motivate so that is a form of communication. We are all aware of that. And then to interact. Of course, as human as we are, we really need or we really have the need to interact and or so socialize with other people because life is so boring if we are not connected with anyone. We really need connections. We really need to widen our networks in order also for us to have someone to vent on when we feel something bad or in order also for us to have someone with us to celebrate with us with our victories to sympathize with us when we are in gloomy days so we really need each other no one is an island that's why we really have the need to interact with other people so we have to socialize that is a very important purpose of communication next is to regulate when you want to control something like you are a parent and you don't want your child to play with the the outlet in your house so you have to say no 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 like that so if you are the mayor and you are delivering a speech about the rules and regulations about no smoking policy so that is to regulate to express is when you want to express your feelings your anger your gratitude your love so it could either be a good feeling, a good emotion, or a bad emotion. So express. That's why we, we sing, we write poems in order to express, especially when, when we cannot say it in, in an or, ordinary way. So we express it through poems. But most um the most common is that we express it to our friends but in formal setting to express is intertwined with the other uh, purposes of communication so you cannot say that in a in a single speech there is only one intention so of course in a single speech there can be a lot of purpose it is it can be a mixture of to inform to instruct or everything so you cannot only single out one purpose for a single speech it's a mixture it depends on the situation okay so in this lecture video we will focus on the mode of speech delivery so we will not be talking about the written communication here we will be talking about the, the oral communication and we will focus on speech so in communicating the speaker has to choose the right medium or mode of his or her message 
to cut across his or her intended receivers. That's why we have modes of speech delivery. But before talking about modes of speech delivery, let's define speech first. So what is speech? So speech is, of course, a process of directly connecting and interacting with a large number of audience to transmit a message. So it's a one-way form of communication. It may be a public communication or a mass communication. When it's mediated with technology, like I, uh, I will be requiring you to submit a recorded speech and then you have to upload it in social media. So that is already mass communication. But if you will do it face-to-face, uh, in front of the crowd, then that's public communication. So, but it's still a speech. So, it is a one-way communication because your audience will not have a direct chance of interrupting you or interacting with you because you are up there delivering your speech. So this is not a conversation. That's why it's just a one-way process. They may respond to your speech, but right after your speech or just on their seats, not affecting your, your speech totally. It may affect minimally, like in example, Rainia speaking. So... The first mode of speech delivery is the manuscript speech delivery. This is very common today, like in, like in the inspirational message, valedictory address, keynote address, or in the state of the nation address of our president. So from the word manuscript, meaning, From the word manuscript speech delivery, meaning you will just be reading your manuscript or a teleprompter, like in the KBP broadcasting. So they have teleprompters or they have their iPods with them and they will just be reading their manuscript. So this is also very common in the valedictory address where the valedictorian would read her or his speech at the podium on the stage, right? So when you see them reading or you yourself is reading the manuscript, that is called manuscript speech delivery. And uh, one time also when I was young, when I am um, watching the State of the Nation address of our president, I thought that the president was very spontaneous because there was no mistakes when he delivered her address. But I realized that there was a prompter. It wasn't obvious because the president delivered it well, like... He was glancing at the audience and then the prompter, I guess, is on both sides. So his head was moving, not really focusing on one direction. So it was not obvious and um, I was not able to realize that there was a prompter. So I thought he was really that spontaneous. So... The advantage also of manuscript speech delivery is that you'll deliver the exact word that you wish to deliver. The advantage, disadvantage, I mean, the disadvantage of this is that there is less chance for eye-to-eye -eye contact. And eye-to-eye -eye contact is very important in speech delivery. So how to how to integrate eye-to-eye -eye contact in a manuscript speech delivery is you really have to adjust your pacing. Like you have to glance on your manuscript or on your 
printed page and then glance back to the audience. Never focus on your manuscript. Otherwise, your audience will not uh, listen to you anymore or will lose the, the interest to be with you. Okay, so I have here some tips for manuscript speech delivery. You have to maintain your energy. Even if you are just reading, you have to maintain your energy. You have to aspirate, aspirate the, the you have to aspirate the, the consonant sounds like that, like uh, project. Uh, you have to modulate your voice. You have to look at your audience. You have to be quick with your gestures so that your, your audience will also be energized. So nobody would want to listen to a very lousy speaker, of course, like he or a speaker is just reading the manuscript, like, wow, 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 wow. So no one would listen to that, okay? So next tip is that you have to project a good voice and personality. So if you are able, you have to modulate your voice. If you think that you can still give more, then give more, but never shout. Because once you are shouting, that's already irritating also to the ears of your audience. So just modulate, then adjust in accordance to your context or your environment when you are in a closed door so you have to regulate your voice that not to the point that will irritate to your audience but if it's a, an open area then there is really a great chance for you to amplify your voice like that okay so number three is you have to use your own wording if possible. I know you can feel it. If it's directly from your heart, it's your own word, then it would be so easy for you to express it. It would be so easy for you to author your words. Unlike when you just copy pasted it from Google, like you copy pasted, pasted some quotes from Google, then it would really be so hard for you to express it because it's not from you. It's not from your own, uh, your own ins. It's not your own insight. So you cannot relate with that quote like that. Okay, so use your own wording regardless if it's just simple. Do not, do not use high highfalutin words just to impress your audience. They will never appreciate that. Just use understandable language. Okay, based also on your comfort. And then use your body to add emphasis and clarity to your words if you need to open your palm then open it if you need to raise a finger then raise it like that if you need to nod or shake your head then do it just to add emphasis to your words in clarity and then Next is you have to use short, simple sentences. I want to emphasize this because when we are speaking, we are really tempted to connect and connect and connect our thoughts without us knowing that we really need to stop because our audience is already confused and is not able to trace anymore our main idea okay so keep it short uh slice your ideas okay into shorter sentences and then prepare in large print you really have to prepare in large print so that you will not be distracted when when you do glance to your audience and then you look back to your printed page you will not be tempted to go back to the line where you already read like that i often try that one that i go back to the line the same line that i already read okay so in order for you to avoid destruction 
especially when you glance to the audience and look back to your printed page and then it's already very hard for you to trace back uh, and then you will say asa nagay ko dapit so like that so just prepare in large print to to facilitate your your reading well okay so next a mode of delivery is the impromptu speech delivery this is really quite hard especially if you are not used to speaking with people or if you are not exposed to delivering impromptu speech it's really hard especially also if you are not familiar with the situation or the subject you are confronted with. Like you are joining a pageant and then a picture is shown to you and you are asked to say something about that picture and you don't have an idea on, uh, you don't have an idea of what is that picture. So the tendency is you will not be able to give a speech because you yourself cannot relate to that picture. So this is really hard because you are not given an ample time to prepare for your speech. Maybe one minute or two minutes from the moment you were given the topic or the subject of your speech, you are already, you are already requested to give your speech one minute after or two minutes after like this one in the pageants q and a you really need to be witty like if you will be asked um how can you define an empowered woman so as a beauty queen you really need to be witty and answer the question promptly so like that that's impromptu so as part of the moment you are not given an ample time give your answer directly and this is really quite hard but do you wonder how those uh, beauty queens uh, give an answer to to empirical questions or to questions that are so hard sometimes. So in this lecture video, I will be giving you some patterns. If you are observant enough, you can see these patterns in their answers in the Q&A. So if you are confronted with the Q&A contest, for example, or if we will have an activity on impromptu. So use this pattern. So you, for example, you are given a subject or a topic. You have to assess the topic and then decide what pattern of impromptu speech you will use for, for answering. So will it be the who, what, when, where, how, pattern or the cause and effect pattern the past present and future pattern or logical patterns like spatial deductive inductive comparison and contrast okay so when you say who what when where how pattern after assessing the subject or the topic answer the relevant information about that topic and be guided by the questions who what when where and how you can also use the cost and effect pattern especially if you are confronted with situational questions so let me think of an example like are you in favor of divorce like that so the divorce may be the cause and then enumerate the effect if ever the divorce will be legalized in the philippines so the pattern is like that you can also use the past present future you have to 
state the situations in the past uh, regarding uh, marriage and then you have to look at the present if is it if it is it still if is it still practical to not legalize divorce or is it practical to legalize divorce in the present and then you have to associate it with the future is it practical in the future or will it affect the future generation like that so it depends to where you are comfortable with but personally i often observed that uh, people who are into impromptu speaking use logical pattern patterns no logical patterns like spatial when you say uh, spatial meaning you have to describe the object uh, given to you depending on the location of that object so you have to describe the object itself when you say deductive it means from general to specific from the word deduct meaning from big to small like you will relate that topic to the global situations down to the national situations to municipal situations to the barangay situations to your family situations and then to your personal situations so that's deductive there are some beauty queens who would answer that way so inductive is the opposite of course of the deductive it is starting from the specific to the general like you will answer to that question by starting it with relating it to yourself then to the community and then to the nation and then to the universe like that so and then comparison and contrast when you say comparison meaning you are trying to see the similarities of of two situations the the advantages of both situations given to you like legalizing and not legalizing divorce and also the contrast when you say contrast the differences but nowadays comparison the word comparison itself is already accepted as to as as determining the the similarities and the differences of both sides so just choose where you are comfortable with will you use the deductive logical pattern or the de inductive logical pattern the comparison and contrast logical pattern or the cause and effect pattern it depends to you so to where you are comfortable with okay so one final note we are not yet done but i will give you this note one final note that one has to make in an impromptu speech is to make it brief the ability to identify the introduction the body and the conclusion guide the speaker well so ibc introduction body and conclusion this is the very salient uh, components of the speech the introduction the body and the conclusion so just make it brief so that you will not be turning around the bush so like in the answers of of catriona so it was just brief like that so there were, i don't know if we will deeply examine the answers in the miss universe if there is really an introduction body and conclusion like that but in formal speeches of course there must be an introduction body and conclusion okay so the third uh mode of speech delivery is the extemporaneous i know this is very familiar to you 
this is quite similar to impromptu. It's just that in extemporaneous, you will be given an ample time, like five minutes after giving the topic, or after you are given the topic, you are given five minutes to prepare an outline. Of course, you will not be preparing for your speech. You will not be writing your speech. For example, if you will join a contest on extemporaneous speaking and you are given five minutes Five minutes to prepare. Never be tempted to prepare a speech. Just prepare an outline because five minutes will never be enough for you to prepare a speech. So just an outline. So extemporaneous speaking allots a considerable time for preparation. Although there is no memorization involved, a speaker relies on an outline of his speech as a guide as he delivers it extemporaneously. So it is very important that before, before, sub, before submitting yourself into extemporaneous speaking, you already exposed yourself to uh, to catchy ideas or catchy quotations so that you can use those quotations as your introduction or your conclusion. So your speech will be more, more remarkable to your audience. Okay, so... I will be giving you some tips for extemporaneous speaking. Number one, you have to prepare an outline on a notepad. So when you are delivering an extemporaneous speech, you are allowed to bring a notepad. And then you have to glance at your, uh, you have to glance on your outline. And then if you can do memorize your outline, then the better, okay? So just an outline, like, what will I say in the introduction? What will I say in the body? What will I say in the conclusion? So just an outline. In the conclusion, I will say about Nadella's quotation about education is blah, 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 blah. And then in the introduction, I will ask the audience about, are you aware of like that? And then in the body, I will give them three points that or three advantages and three disadvantages of this and that like that so that is extempted extempo and then you also need to use your body to add emphasis and clarity to your words this is actually the the common thing on all the types of of modes or on, on all the mo modes of speech delivery. Use your body to add emphasis and clarity to your words and then project a good voice and personality because of course nobody would want to less uh, nobody would want to listen to someone who is speaking in a very lousy manner or someone who has a very thin voice like Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm very delighted to talk to you. So, of course, not that way. So, there must be a good voice and a good personality that the message must be in accordance also, or the facial expression must be in accordance to the speech. Like he said, he was delighted, but, but the tone of the voice seems not to be delighted. So, so when you say you are delighted to talk to your audience, show, show to them that you are, I am really delighted to talk to you today like that. So projecting a good personality. And then you have to wear a good attire that will define you. Like if you want to project a formal identity, then then dress formally like that and then adjust speech to listeners but of course do not be interrupted by them then without losing sight of the ideas that are part of the ibc like you are giving them your one strong point and then the audience reacted huh 
like that. The audience would say, like, huh? So you may say, why are you reacting like that? I said that because when you are in this situation, blah, 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 blah. So you can adjust with your audience. But of course, do not leave the topic. Just stay on the topic. Do not go outside of the issue. Okay? So don't sound like in prepared speech. It's very obvious when you are over-prepared for the extemporaneous. That's why if you want to rehearse yourself with related quotations, then just minimize it. You may just include it in your conclusion or in your introduction. Do not, uh, do not uh, overload. Do not overload your speech with a lot of quotations or prepared speeches. Okay, if you have rehearsed something that you think might be related to your speech, then add it, but not in a way that would that would let your audience feel that it's a memorized speech. So like that. Okay, so next mode of delivery is the memorized speech delivery and I guess this would be your favorite because you will just be memorizing but of course if it's a memorized speech of course the teacher or your audience will be expecting an intense intense what intense energy intense gesture, intense facial expression, direct eye-to-eye -eye contact, because there was a long time given for you to rehearse your speech. So this kind of speech has to be committed to memory, but spontaneity in thought, as well as in verbal and nonverbal behavior, is a lost. Of course, because of this is rehearsed in the tendency of also is that you will be focusing on what is being memorized what's next what's that word i must stick to that word like that so tips for memorized speech you have to rehearse the speech many times over I suggest in the front of the mirror or record your voice and then try to listen to your voice and rectify if there are some words that you have mispronounced because as human as we are, we are not really perfect and we are also not native speakers of the language. So it's expected that we will sometimes commit some errors even if we know the underlying rules or we know the right pronunciation of that words. But when we deliver it, we sometimes would be mistaken. So rehearse, keep on rehearsing and then record record and try to listen what part of my speech will I improve like that okay and then if possible rehearse in front of your friends or rehearse in front of your family for you to be used with having an audience okay so next you have to reinforce the message with your voice and gestures like like in the uh, speakers of TED Talks, even if in TED Talks, uh, those, are, uh, those are sometimes impromptu, sometimes extemporaneous, uh, sometimes prepared like that. But, you know, as speakers, they are into a lot of speaking events. So the tendency is they already memorized their lines, their, their messages, so that is also one for one of the forms of memorized speech. Even teachers, if you are already teaching for 20 years on the same subject, the tendency is that you will oh the tendency is that you already memorized your subject. So you can teach even without any book or 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 any sources because you already memorized everything because you have been teaching for 20 years. So like that, memorize. So repetition, 
would really uh, lead to memorization okay then project a good voice and personality when you also over rehearse there's also a tendency that you will lose the quality of your voice so take care of your voice also while rehearsing or reserve your voice when the event where you where uh event where you will be delivering your speech is already close like you will be delivering on april 20 so reserve your voice on april 15 no rehearsals anymore relax your your vocal cords like that and then Use your body again to add emphasis and clarity to your words. The same thing all throughout the modes of speech delivery. So to sum up, the big concept here is though voice and body are seen to be the specifics to become a good speaker, it is your total personality that cements your connection to your audience. So there are really tendency that we really cannot achieve the ideal voice of a good speaker, but at least you have the good personality to connect with your audience. And then give the best of your voice. Give the best of your body gestures and then coordinate your your facial expression with the message that you are trying to deliver in order for your audience to feel the sincerity of your um, message to sum up those uh, modes of delivery first we have the manuscript speech delivery second we have the impromptu speech delivery third is the extemporaneous speech delivery and fourth is the memorized speech delivery so we have four modes of speech delivery so in our activities i will be asking you to deliver a speech so let's see what kind of or what mode of delivery will it be so thank you for listening to this lecture video and i hope you have learned something from this very quick yes very quick lecture and keep learning thank you very much